Answers 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. Well, good evening. It is a Monday night. It is time to tin your tip with myself, Gary Dibley, and the ever capable mod master that is Mark. And that is easy for me to say. Um, fresh back, I'd say fresh, but uh, back from Vapefest 2013. And I must say, I had an absolutely brilliant time. For all of the people out there that, uh, that 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 watch, that come up, that said hello, all the people that I spent the weekend with, um, I had the best time. Uh, I think I've had at Vayfest for a long time. Come back with some new toys. If you're watching the pre-show, uh, I have a jazz carto pipe um, that I, I purchased from Desert Safer Sigs, and a uh, and a kick um, kick version two that Lisa who was next to me on the store at Cloud Nine I kept saying to her all day Lisa save me a kick save me and, and it come down she went I've got two left I went I definitely want one um, I haven't got the kick in here yet because it seems to be performing well by itself with the the cartos that it come with um, but I do have the kick in the uh, in the KTS the kick version two I'll be doing some on that a little bit later on. Uh, not not now, but later on, you know, weeks away. Um, I'm going to show you something. Uh, my footage of Vapefest is, uh, I'll put it mildly, is crap. Um, but mine was mainly um, sort of involved in setting up and, and helping the guys out to sort of get things done. Um, you know, the, all the pre-stuff. Um, it was just chaotic. It was chaotic. Let me show you this, and I'll come back in two. And there we go. That, to be honest, says it all to me. Roll on next year. Um, and I know there's been a lot of people talking about um, the, the, the size of the venue, this and the other. I think we can pretty much promise you that next year will be... Um, Vape Fest next year is sort of going to be like Disneyland on steroids, I think. This year was, was organised last, last minute. Um, there would have been no Vape Fest. It was out there for a long, long, long time. Um, nobody wanted to take it up so the team reformed and 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 you know it, it was one of those things that it was either going ahead or it wasn't it went ahead to me it was a great success it was more a success because obviously at the end of the day we were doing um, I was there doing my thing with the tips and stuff but the, the, everybody kept coming up to me and saying can I put stuff in the pot and uh, Rat thinks she came up to me and said can you put some money in, in the pot for me and you know it was deeply 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 stunning that people were doing that now I, I did direct them to to the uh, you know the just giving page um, the raffle uh, uh, you know I, I was announcing the raffle and at the end of that Wayne come up to he grabbed the mic from me and and, and announced that, that the raffle were you know the proceeds for the raffle a thousand pound were going to the children need fund um and and it shocked me you know it was it was it, it was one of those things it was stunning and and a lot of the people that wanted to donate stuff to the raffle but were a bit too late um decided to give it to me for the children in need raffle that i'm going to be running very very shortly 
and some of the stuff you know I've, I've got a package here which is absolutely superbly wrapped I've never seen anything a vaping package wrapped like that before from Mrs Lord and Co um, and I was with Jim who used to be you know who was one of the vapor mists and, and he'd give me one of it I don't know if you see those on the day but they are stunning a little sort of tom tom pipe I've got loads and loads and loads of stuff coming to me um, and I'll, I'll do something on that sort of uh, a little bit later on I need to crack on with the show um, there'll be a little bit more talky stuff in between um, let's crack on because obviously Mark has been been doing his DNA mod um, while, while I've been you know um, I won't say smoozing but talking to lots of nice lovely people and for those people that said um, I, I, I could <laughs> the, the amount of people that come up to me and said how are you feeling today Gary are you um, you know it was it was just it was good fun 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 day it was a pleasure meeting everybody a pleasure being in the company of everybody that I was with that weekend um, I thoroughly enjoyed it um, let's crack on with Mark's next little bit of his DNA mod Now I've got a rough idea of the sort of size I want for the window. I'm just going to quickly cut it off with a Dremel. And I'm going to cut it to oversized because it's not an exact shape. So I'm going to have to cut it a bit big and then slowly file and sand it down to the exact size I need. Pretty much that's it. That's where I'm going to have to work to. And all it's going to be a case of that's trial and error, I think. This could well be the first of several attempts at trying to do this. But we'll see how it goes. After a lot of filing, sanding, uh, testing and then more filing and sanding. I've got a window in there. It's sitting nicely. Nice design. It just needs glued in place now. So I'm going to use uh, some plastic weld to seal the two bits together. It just involves basically brushing it along the edges, and this stuff will melt the two together. very quickly around the brush around the edge and where the two bits meet it will seal in place at least that's the theory Should do it. This stuff takes literally seconds to dry off, and when it's done, you've got a solid join all the way around. Next step is to put everything together. The next thing I need to sort out, and I've got the display area sorted. It's just to add the holes for the up and down switch. So I'm thinking either end of the display above it is a fairly good position, I think. So I've marked out somewhere midline between the two. Position is not too important. I just need it to look neat, I think. So. I 
that's the pilot hole solid. And I think the smallest size on this drill bit, I'm guessing, is around about the right sort of size for these tactile switches. But I guess we're about to find out. So. Drilled. Move the tape so you can see what's going on. This will wipe clean later. So that's the switch I'm planning on using. And it's a little bit tight. So I'm going to take it to the next step, I think. So, that should be definitely two holes more than big enough. Indeed they are. And if you look at this tactile switch, which is a 3.5mm post on it, it's a little bit flush with that. That'll work fine. I might try a slightly bigger switch. So I've got ones which are 5mm. Let's see the difference. That sticks up quite a way. I don't know. I think it might actually be better with this one, which is rather flush. Because I don't want them sticking up. So I'll stick with the 3.5mm tactile switches, I think. Right, I'll just clean up and get ready to solder. So, Mr. Dibley, this is how I do it. Um, I'm going to use a mandrel for making tips and the idea is that you slide your blanks onto this mandrel, space them out with these little spaces which happen to be just slightly narrower than you need for the drip tip stem and then mount it into the lathe. So I've already chopped three blanks off at uh, 37.5mm each, um, 3.75 centimetres and what I'm going to do is drill the holes in the centre of the blanks mount them on the mandrel, stick them onto the lathe and then off we go. The blank is trapped in the drill press in this nice little holder um, so let's get the holes away and I'll do all three of them. Go. Gently do it. it that's the three blanks drilled so now we'll move to the lathe mount them on the mandrel and mm -hmm. that'll be it so here we are with the mandrel and um, let's mount the the blanks up and I do apologize for my neighbors it's Saturday morning and of course they're mowing the lawn so we're going to start with two spaces left at that end and we'll slide the black one first and then two spaces. 
and we'll have the gold one and the single spacer finally that one a further spacer and screw it all together this then mounts into the lathe the tailstock comes in and that kind of holds the whole thing together now the way this works it will drive because we put pressure on from here so we'll just tighten that down and then clamp the whole thing so we'll clamp it down that way it's not going to shift and it stops the tailstock from moving just in case we need to stop that from happening and off we go we set the the guard we're slightly off center but it really doesn't matter because we're going to turn these things so that they are centralized and we're going to use a lot less of them than you might think right so that's the lathe set up and off it goes spinning and we'll start with a gouge and the gouge will allow me to get these things circled off and here we go need to get my rest a little closer and then we start shaping do is turn the the at the end first and you look at the top So, right, still learning about this, so let's go on to the middle one and try again. Made a mess of that. Okay, here we go. Middle one. All right, having made a mess of the first one, let's try the second one. And there we go, we're back again in the room. Now, I don't know if you noticed anything um, through that video that Dave Dorn was doing there. Uh, and obviously Dave, he did that for me um, prior to going away, which I do appreciate very, very much. He knew that this weekend was going to be um, an absolute killer. Um, so he put that together to sort of uh, fill the gap of him um, playing in his garden. Now, his garden seems to have birds singing and it's just like living in leading the land of Eden. Um, mine has people shouting, swearing, and, um, you know, mowers and dogs barking, and they say, I, I want to move next door to that. Well, I might not 
No. Um, anyway, let's go to our first air break. I'll see you back very shortly after this. Liberty Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. again um so yes dave showing us his lathe skills and um i'll tell you what this video is is quite impressive uh, what he actually turns out um as you could probably see i'm i'm gradually falling to sleep now um so rapidly <laughs> before i do i'm going to crack on with mark's next little bit of his dna 20 mod now i've to save a bit of time i've cut and stripped and tinned up all the wires I'm going to need because uh, it's a very boring thing to watch so now it's just a matter of putting everything together let's start with the charging board and let's see, I just need one wire for the positive, one wire for the negative being very careful not to mix them up and we'll have serious problems as everything's pre-tinned it's just going to be a matter of adding a drop of solder positive negative Now for the switches, to make things a bit easier with these, I'm going to do them, one of them with two reds, as it's a switch it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, and one with two blacks so I know which one's which. Just quickly add a drop of sword to the legs. Touch the two together, basically. That's one. Basically, as simple as that. Now, I've 
took the opportunity to also pre-wire the 510 connector. So I just need to solder all these bits onto the board. So the charger will be first. In fact, I'm going to take them through the top so I'm soldering underneath. Avoid the ribbon cable a bit. If it is one of the time, it's probably going to be simpler, isn't it? Or not. Someone fresh all at that tip. And miss the joint completely. Biggest problem here is they are so small. It doesn't really give you a lot of room to play with. Not the do. So that's basically all the components soldered in place. It's a bit of a mess. You've got the two wires coming off this side for the up switch, two wires on this side for the down. You've got the two here are feeding the atomizer connector and the other two are for the main switch and at the bottom you've got two for the power and two for the charging circuit so I need to make sure everything's working before I start the gluing thing in place so I'm just going to pop this battery in because I know this battery needs a charge it would help if this battery would actually connect with the circuit doesn't want to. Not a problem, it's because this is so flat on the end it doesn't always connect with this sort. So I'll put a magnet on. And there you go. Now be able to see it's registering seven watts currently. The you can see that the battery needs charged. If I press the down button, it's going to 7.6, 7.5, and the up button. The other way. We got no problem there. I quickly screw an atomizer to the connector. Press the fire button now. Same to check battery. As I thought that battery is quite flat. So before I do that I need to check the USB charger. So I'll plug in a charger. That's coming up with a blue light. So now in theory that should be charging. this battery out and slot in the one I'm going to be using. I'll knock everything over. That's a fully charged battery and that's sizzling away nicely at 5 volts. This is a 3.5 volt and I quite it won't go below 5 which is alright by me. Right now, I need to take this all apart and start fitting together.
move to a round end rake. And let's go for the the happy end. be just slightly above this collar here so let's see that looks to be about it so now I can start shaping and I'll come from the mouthpiece end in a little it's messy this Thank you. 
and so I'm just getting it to shape now and then we'll start polishing very very shortly. Well, I couldn't leave this week without um, sort of filming something. Now, I'm doing this spur of the moment. Um, it is probably about quarter to eight. I go live at nine o'clock. Um, and I just had to, uh, to to get this in. I've probably been chunting away on this for a little while. This is, um, if you like, the Jazz Carto pipe um, that Mr. Kitson has got. And this is the 18... Uh, 18500 or uh, 18350 with a kick job um, stunning it's already got all the kick tube in there and everything it is an absolute stunning piece of workmanship um, I got this at Vapefist I uh, probably mentioned this already um, now the one thing that I I like um, but I didn't sort of quite get on with was was the uh, was the mouthpiece um, everybody to their own for me it just it just I don't know. I don't like big things in my mouth. My wife is much the same. Um, so what I've been doing uh, is lathing away. Now I did have a chunk of, of nice um, sort of, uh, I'm going to have to be really quick, a nice bit of uh, stuff um, to play with. Now I took all my dimensions and this and another with my calipers and I come up with this, which is pretty much on a par with what I've got. And um, I'm just going to slap this in here and we've turned this out of the sort of the tortoiseshell material now for me that goes down to my usual sort of mouthpiece and then that makes that so much I'm not going to say it makes it nicer it makes it easier for me to use on a personal sort of preference thing but I just wanted to see a whether it could be done, B, how difficult it was, um, and you know, I had some time to kill today, so I thought, oh, I said I had time to kill, I, I haven't now. But I don't want to get that any closer, but it looks really nice. I think it matches it very, very, very well. There we go. That's a little, little tiny update of how this is, again, obviously done on the lathe. I'm going to try filming, making one of these. Um, there we go. I'll put the original one back on. Yeah. That one. Yeah. Which I do like. Don't get me wrong. I do like that. And my little one. Just wanted to show you. Happy days. Back to me in the studio. And there we go. The wonderful Mr. Dave Dorm um, showing us his ring um, for the first time on, on Vapor Trails TV and how he managed to get it in such good shape. Um, and, and me showing you a little bit of, uh, of my tip that I made for the pipe, um, which I'm, lo I'm loving that pipe. I really am loving that pipe. It is time to go into a second hour break. I'll see you very shortly after this. <music> Liberty Flight sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley.
Liberty Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And we are back in the room once again. And I did notice some of the comments in chat, people saying that it should be longer. Um, all from women, bizarrely. Um, I quite like the stubby ones, uh, but that may be a man thing. Um, let me crack straight on into Mark's little, uh, it's his final bit of his, uh, of his DNA 20 mod. Well, the first job I need to get done is to proxy the charging board in place. And for that I'm going to be using a clear epoxy. Save for that because by the end of this I'm going to end up using two different kinds. I'm using this clear one and then the epoxy putty to fix in a lot of the components. The liquid one's going to be better for on the bottom. this down I think while I'm on I can probably epoxy the battery compartment uh, battery holder into the case as well So I'll have to do these separately. Otherwise I'm just going to move this out of the way. So I shall leave that to set and I'll come back when it's done and I'll fix the rest in. Unfortunately, I've had to skip a couple of stages and I just couldn't do them on camera. Uh, that was mostly um, fixing the display in place and the buttons. Because I had to get this exactly right. And if I didn't, it was going to make it a mess. So there we have it. Now I just need to secure all of this in place. And to do that I'm going to use some epoxy putty I think. So I just need to cut a piece off. And mix it all together. Just a matter of mixing the two parts into one. So you get a nice even colour. And then pop it in place. So I just want to pop a bit around the atomizer connector to secure that up.
and across the switches to hold them in place. And of course the screen itself. At this point you can also take the opportunity to hold the wires down out of the way. And fix your switch in. That's basically it, you just need a bit of water to Stop your finger stick and do it and you can just mould it all in place. I'll be back when all this is fixed in and dry it off. So basically that's it done. I've let the epoxy set and now I've screwed in the four holes. Eh, the four screws even. So hopefully that'll be the last time this is ever opened. It should still let us the rest of its life when you look. So you've got the firing button on one side and the display on the other with the up down button up being towards the top of the mod down towards the bottom So there you have it Firing nicely And the buttons Moving it up and down nice. Got USB charged on the base. And we should be good to go. Now for size comparison I thought probably one of the fairest things to compare to would be the EVIC. As they've got similar properties. And height wise it's almost exactly the same height. It's slightly wider. Uh, and a little bit lighter to be honest. I think it should go well or well. So there you have it. So there it is, that's the captive ring turned and I'm just looking to make sure there's no dings or anything on it and there's not, that looks as though it'll work. So rather than go on to this one, we'll start the polishing routine on this one here and then you can see how that goes. Okay, polishing. Let's uh, move the rest out of the way because we don't need it. And being the lazy type that I am, I tend to use the shavings to soak any water up. And we're going to use micro mesh. This bit is probably going to end up being speeded up quite considerably because it can take some time. But you can see that's quite matte at the minute. So let's see how we go from there. Micro mesh, watered down, tan one first, slightly slower. Here we go. And the next grid. Which is green.
And the next one, which is black. And you step down these one at a time until you're there. You can see the shine starting to come on the blank now. Purple's me next one. Nearly there. It's quite smooth. And finally, the royal blue and then the grey. This is the last one. Should make for very shiny. You can see it's shiny. And that should be it polished and there it is as shiny as a shiny thing with a captive ring so we'll take it off the mandrel and uh, give it a go and that's how I do it that's it pretty much finished when I get some of the bases to put in then we'll be looking at using a smaller mandrel in order to be able to do it and there's another way of doing it which I'll do another time so that Gary can show you on tin your tip uh, how I do various different styles so there you go Gary it's back to you and indeed back to me thank you very very much to uh, Mr Dorm for doing that to uh, bail me out this week <laughs> and and for Mark stunning DNA 20 mod absolutely brilliant to watch and kudos to the pair of you um, this week coming up we do have tomorrow night um, vapor scene with Marco followed by DE talk on Wednesday we have I'm, gonna, I'm not going to quit the nut house but we've got these guys back 
Right. Oh, All I can hear is Sav. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that talk a lot. I'm sorry. Hello and welcome to the Here's How I Forgot the second half of that sentence. I got out of work. I forgot how to continue. <laughs> yeah, the Here's How sponsored by Safe Six. Have we still got viewers? Ooh. Yeah, we've got 87 currently watching. I've got 88. Yeah, I've got 88. Yeah, I did. Uh, someone's not watching. She was not watching that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's right, I was looking at the wrong screen. (laughs) And on Thursday, we have... uh, Unfortunately, I've stitched Lewis up again, and um, and he's got to work. (laughs) Sorry, Lewis. Um, so I'll be joining the team on Thursday and we'll have another sort of hangout type show where we will no doubt set the worlds to right. On Sunday, Mr. Kitson is back and uh, it was back last week, but he'll be back again. Um, and uh, and obviously he'll be showing you his tackle box. Um, I do hope tonight you, you've enjoyed what we've uh, sort of slung together. Um, I will say, for all the people I met at Vape Fest, it was an absolute pleasure to meet each and every one of you. Um, you know, it was a lovely thing to talk to people about modding, people that didn't have a clue, people that were fresh off the street, etc. It was it was a really, really, really good weekend. Vape Fest next year promises to be a Disneyland on steroids. Um, so we're told, uh, you know, and I think it is definitely, definitely, definitely going ahead. It will happen. It will be there. Um, it has been emotional once again, guys. It is time for me, uh, finally, to go to bed. I've got to go back to work tomorrow. I'm knackered. Um, I'll see you all next week. Um, hopefully with a bit more news. Take care. Cheers now. Take care.